So today's email comes all the way from South Africa from a listener named Morn. And forgive me if I mispronounce your name. And this person's email reads, Hi Keith, after listening to most of your videos, I noticed that you say that many people, such as Leighton Flowers and other non-Calvinists, are lost, period. How do you distinguish between a lost person and a very immature but true Christian? The Bible says, seems to say that we grow in grace. We do not achieve this high level of maturity and sanctification all at once. People like Peter, David, Samson, and Jonah all went through stages of serious sin in their lives after their conversion. Also, a defined level of spiritual maturity is never indicated as necessary for being saved. And I would assume this includes a wrong understanding or interpretation of Calvinism. Now, if someone just disagrees with Calvinism or has a or is in persistent sin in their life at this moment in time, how can you say that they are lost? So thank you, Morn, for your email. And I'm going to do my best to answer each point of your email. So the first question in your email is this. How do you distinguish between a lost person and a very immature but true Christian? Well, if we are specifically dealing with men like Leighton Flowers and Frank Turek, for example, these men are not new converts. Okay? They've been quote unquote Christians longer than I've been a Christian myself. We're not dealing with men of whom can use the excuse of being immature. That just doesn't work here. So how do you tell the difference between a lost person and an immature person? Well, that's a question that has many different variables to it. And that makes it hard to know precisely. You would need to know specific things about the person and what they actually believe in order to make an assessment here. But what we can know is whether or not the person holds the biblical doctrine right now. And neither of these men do. This is not a case of a group of immature men. These men do not worship the God of the Bible. And if you doubt that, you need to listen to more of their content. The second thing that you say is that the Bible seems to, to say that we grow in grace, that we do not achieve this high level of maturity and sanctification all at once. And this is correct. And you've never heard me say otherwise on this channel. Okay. And you then go on to mention that Peter, David, and Samson, uh, as men that went through stages of serious sin in their lives after conversion. Well, now you're starting to go off a little, go kind of off topic here. Okay. We need to be very clear here. Instances in the Bible that display the fall of godly men is not the same thing as being a heretic. The truth is, if Calvinism was around in the time of these men, they would agree with it as well. See, what you need to understand is that men like Leighton Flowers and Frank Turek don't just have a wrong understanding about Calvinism. They have a hatred for it, a literal hatred for it, because it defines a God that they hate. When we look at Arminianism, it's a false doctrine that was created more than 100 years after Calvinism as a liberal reaction to the doctrine of predestination. Arminianism wasn't created because Calvinism was false. It was created in response to a truth, and the goal was to suppress that truth. And that's exactly what these men are doing. So why do I say that these men are lost? Because I'm going off the only thing that I can go off of, and that's what they currently believe. But in all things, the Lord has the final say-so. So I hope I've answered all your questions. Let's go for another one from cyberspace. Why should we engage in debate since it seems to cause division in the church? What message does that send to those outside the church? God forbid that we should ever debate the truth of the gospel, and that we should ever follow in the footsteps of the Apostle Paul who debated the matter every day in the marketplace, and who wrote all these epistles to correct error and distortions of the truth of God. Weren't those letters that the Apostle wrote to the Ephesians and to the Galatians and the Colossians divisive? Nothing divides like truth. Nothing divides like Jesus. But we have this idea that the only real sin that you can have is dividing a church. Well, there are churches that need to be divided, and they need to be divided not over minor matters, not over peccadillos, but over substantive issues of the truth of God. And our Lord, when He was asked by Pontius Pilate, you know, what are you about? He said, I came to bear witness to the truth. And those who are of the truth hear my voice. And then the next thing Jesus said, but I sure don't want to divide anybody over the truth. <laughs> Thank you for laughing, but it's really not funny. 
But that's what, I mean, they said the worst thing you can say is the truth is important. And when you, when you do that, then what happens is the truth gets slain in the streets and anything goes.